Hello, and welcome back to the Power Shed. Uh, this is my new meter of the week. And uh, I was at the Y this morning exercising, and I was watching some uh, YouTube videos on direct power from solar panels. And I thought, well, you know, it's, you know, them just hooking up a connector. But I was thinking uh, I should do some more of these simple videos. And this one is on direct power. Uh, as you from other videos you might have seen, this is my favorite uh, soldering iron. You know, it has motion sensing on the on the wand. Uh, it goes to sleep. It detects if you put it in that little brass holder there. Uh, you can adjust the power, and it's portable. So I got this thing, and I didn't have a battery for it, and <laughs> I got a battery. Then I got a battery, and I didn't have a charger for it. So I had to do something. So I got these connectors on Amazon. And, you know, the little jack, too, all pre-wired with leads. I just drilled a hole and put that in there. Now, this battery is 20 volts. And, uh, okay, in the shed, well, you know, I got 14 volts on the battery. And I got, uh, is it... Uh, 59 volts on the solar panel So how do I make 20 volts for this and so I also got these little power supplies. These are kind of nice uh, Little button here and you can do input input voltage Output voltage if you hold it a long time the display will disappear so you're not chewing up a lot of power but This is a 20 volt battery and I've done this very little simple thing there. I have the diode in one leg and the resistor in the other. And there's a little LED. And so, for simplicity, I put the diode up here. So you have the diode voltage drop. You have a 4.7 ohm resistor. And, uh, of course, the LED. I can adjust the power so that light just turns on. And when it just turns on, I know I have somewhere around 360 milliamps. But this thing's plugged in all day. Uh, the reason I have the diode is that, uh, well, I unplug things and uh, things hit pieces of metal. You don't want to short out the battery pack. I have this set up so if I want to power something remotely, uh, I can use it as a power source. Now this battery pack is very simple. You know, you feed the voltage into it, and it'll start charging. The BMS will take care of everything. But uh, things like a Ryobi are very complex. I just, I have a Ryobi battery pack, and I have a drill and a weed whacker, and I never really had a power pack for that. Uh, it's just too com complicated. There's a lot of communications, and uh, I don't want to invest too much time in it. And there's no one on YouTube that tells you what the communications is. So I would have had to make a special tap to uh, be able to charge the battery. But, uh, yeah, I'll be doing a, a, a thing on that. So anyways, I have 12 volts and I have 60 volts. And uh, this will only go up to about 35 volts. So I'd have to use some kind of buck converter. Now these little, these are 12 volt, they were like 1 amp uh, power supplies. <laughs> I, I have a ton of them. I ordered them from China years ago and they were only like a buck and a half shipped. I mean, how could you avoid uh, buying a bunch of those? And so I had some other buck converters I could have used that could have rewired and everything else. But, you know, I had a bunch of these. So I take the 14 volts that... Uh, where is it? Oh, it's up there. 14 volts on the battery. And I put this power supply in series. The nice thing about this is when you're taking power from it, the output is totally isolated. So you can stick it on top of a battery. And so I guess this is like, yeah, 27.6 volts. So that's just perfect. Uh, there's a horrible little trim pot here, a 10 turn trim pot. And, you know, you can never find a screwdriver. Uh, I got to put a 10 turn pot on it sometime when I find one, but uh, that's for another day. And 
I have this little outlet here. It says 24 volts. I use AC plugs for everything. You know, they're polarized. And uh, I don't know. It's not code. But, uh, and, you know, I have taken 12 volt things and plugged them into 60 volts on this power strip. <laughs> and bad things happen. But, you know, it's just, it's just wires. You just fix it. Uh, here's another one of these 12 volts. And uh, I reset this thing for 9 volts, and this power goes to my refrigerator. It runs a, a little computer fan inside the refrigerator because it's a chest fridge, and it gets really stratified because the coils are down at the bottom. A fan helps a little bit. I need to make some tubing, you know, some sewer pipe or something and with some holes in the bottom to get the air down to the bottom of... because. The bottom turns the ice, and the, the top stays at about 38 degrees. So, But I run two fans off that. That's direct power. So on these little power supplies, some of them, uh, you know, it depends upon the chip. Some of them will start fine on about 50 volts. Others take a little more help. And how these work is internally there's the uh, switch mode chip and it's very easy to find it's the only high value resistor on the board it'll be like a 2 mega ohm 3.3 mega ohm it'll be something very high and what that does is it charges up this is an electrolytic capacitor it charges this up and stores enough energy that this thing can boot up and once it boots up there's a little winding that supplies it. And so uh, when these things don't have enough voltage, they bump. So they'll turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. Uh, generally, you know, this 2 mega ohm, I mean, if you did just about anything, it would, it, I put like uh, 600K resistors, whatever I have lying around, 100K resistors. You know, if you're, if you're really low voltages, you know, 100K work fine, you're not going to burn up anything. But, uh, that gives it just enough current coming from the high voltage and enough current coming from uh, the winding so that this thing will boot up and stay running. And once they get running, they'll go down to about 35 volts before they stop. But it's a neat little trick. And like I say, the nice thing is they're isolated. And I'm almost all direct power. Here's my inverter. It's not on. It only turns on when the refrigerator uh is turned, you know, switches on. Uh, so I'm very efficient. I only have this car battery. That's for refrigeration. And most of the stuff, I will have a little 50 amp hour lithium uh, in the house to power, you know, fans and TV and stuff at night. It's amazing how little energy you can live on if you don't waste it. And like, like I say, most people waste it. You know, that's one of my hot water heaters. That heats my secondary tank. And you see a DW on it. That light lights up. Uh, when my dishwasher turns on and the heater turns on, uh, it closes a little relay. And I run the heating element from the dishwasher right off uh, the power from the panels. You know, and... The dishwasher only takes about 100 watt hours to run, and it's generally only about, you know, 80 watts at a time. Here's my second water heater. This is the primary, and the primary is a little two and a half gallon. I got a bunch of these little water heaters uh, off eBay and, and uh, Craigslist, and I only paid like 50 bucks for them, brand new, so that's kind of a deal. So. That's my direct power, and uh, we'll cover some of these other things later. Thanks for watching.